Hi, I'm going to help you remember the causes, the events and the consequences of the Cuban Missile Crisis really easily by just remembering two simple words, Cuban Crisis. Each letter of Cuban Crisis is going to help you remember a couple of simple terms and then that in turn will help you remember the details that we need to know. So, first of all, C, Castro's Revolution, U, Unhappy America, B, Bay of Pigs Fails, A, the Arms Race. N, the naval blockade. C, we're close to war. R, Robert Kennedy. I, Turkey, idea. And S, saved and sacked. I, image again. And S, start of detente. Okay, what do these mean? So C, Castro's Cuban Revolution. In 1959, Fidel Castro overthrew the American-backed dictator of Cuba, Fulgencio Batista. Batista was a military dictator, and he had a lot of friends in American business. And at the time, most of Cuba's businesses were run by big American companies, while most Cubans were very, very poor, often farming sugar. So in 1953, Castro starts an uprising against Batista, and it grows and grows gradually through the years. He gets about 80 men that land in Cuba in 1956, and they begin this guerrilla war. And little by little, they grow in support, and in 1959, Batista is forced to flee, gets on a plane, leaves Cuba, and Castro marches into Havana to, to largely a lot of celebrations. Um, not all Cubans were super thrilled that um, Castro had taken over. For the most part, he's pretty popular in 1959. One of the first things Castro does which really annoys America, and our next letter we need to remember, is unhappy America, you. Okay, what Castro does to make America unhappy is he nationalises Cuban business. Uh, what does this mean? It means the government takes over running a lot of those private American companies that had previously been running Cuban industries. Now this really upsets the American companies and the American government and they in turn decide to put an embargo on Cuba. Economic sanctions, they refuse to buy Cuban products, particularly sugar, which is Cuba's biggest export, which really hurts the Cuban economy. And actually those sanctions are still in place right to this day. So Castro annoys America, makes America unhappy by nationalizing, taking over private American businesses in Cuba. Next thing we need to remember is B, Bay of Pigs fails. Because Kennedy was upset and America was upset at Castro's revolution, um, there'd actually been a secret plan in place before JFK, the new president, took over. President Eisenhower's plan, helped by the CIA, was to train Cuban exiles Cubans who'd left Cuba because they were unhappy about Castro, to train them to return to Cuba and overthrow him. The Cuban exiles they trained were called La Brigada 2506. Uh, and they were trained in America, they were given American uh, money, they were given American uh, weapons. But in Miami, Cubans found out about this and some Cubans sympathetic to Castro let him know. So in 1961, when the American Bracked exiles tried to invade Cuba at the Bay of Pigs, which is a bay, coastal area in Cuba, they were um, intercepted by Cuban, the Cuban army and the uprising or the rebellion was quite easily defeated. And America was pretty embarrassed by this because Castro had defeated them. The other effect of that is Castro wasn't wildly popular in Cuba before this, but because big America appeared to be bullying his new government, a lot of Cubans that hadn't supported Castro before became more passionate or stronger supporters of Castro. So it really backfired for America and for JFK. The next event, a, arms race, Cuban crisis, C-U-B-A. Um, the arms race is going to be an ongoing thing in your studies of the Cold War. But in this case, both sides want to get their weapons as close to the enemy as possible. So the arms race for the Cuban crisis is Castro requests help from the USSR. With America right across the sea from it, and America having tried to overthrow him, um, Castro asks Khrushchev, the leader of the USSR, for help. And Khrushchev puts Soviet missiles into Cuba. Now, America finds out about this because a U-2 American spy plane flies over the island, takes some pictures, and JFK is shown these pictures, and he needs to react. So he demands that Khrushchev remove his missiles from Cuba. Cuba is in America's sphere of influence, it's just a few hundred miles away, so it's very, very scary to the American government. But Khrushchev, of course, refuses. And this leads us to our next thing. Kennedy's got a number of options. He can go to war over this, but potentially that's a nuclear war. The whole world could be destroyed. So he opts for a slightly less aggressive strategy. He puts Cuba under N, a naval blockade. And what this means is American warships go out into the, um, into the seas and they stop Russian ships, Soviet ships from getting to the island of Cuba. Now Khrushchev declares this an act of war. He says America is breaking international law, America has no right to block the sea lanes, and so tension really begins to rise in October 1962. 
And the next thing we need to remember is C, we are close to war. Okay, this is probably the closest we get to nuclear war in the whole of the Cold War. Okay, they call talk about the doomsday clock being at five to midnight, that being when it gets to midnight, we are all destroyed by nuclear war. Um, the real things to remember here to help you explain this is that there is actually fighting during the Cuban Missile Crisis. An American U-2 spy plane is shot down by the Cuban government over Cuba and out at sea a Russian sub or a Soviet sub um, is hit by depth charge. Now the sailors on that submarine have no contact with Moscow at the time so they don't know what to do and two of them think well nuclear war has started we better fire our torpedoes um, but it needed all three of the commanders on the submarine to agree in order to fire and the third of those commanders Vasily Arkhipov decides hmm maybe we should wait before firing and in the end they don't fire the torpedoes and actually potentially save the whole world from nuclear catastrophe but we are really close to war do not underestimate how close we came to war the whole world in these 14 days of October 1962 is holding its breath thinking the world's going to be destroyed JFK goes on television to tell the American public and the wider world what's happening but behind the scenes his brother Robert Kennedy so this is our R of crisis Robert Kennedy begins to negotiate with the Soviet ambassador Anatoly Dobrynin okay the next thing we need to remember is that De Brinin and Robert Kennedy in their negotiations have an idea, okay, I. Their idea is to remove US missiles from Turkey. Turkey is pretty close to the Soviet Union. America had missiles there, obviously really upsetting the Soviets. So the Soviets feel like they've done the same thing by putting missiles in Cuba, but obviously that's upset America. So their uh, compromise is that America will remove its missiles from Turkey in exchange for the Soviet Union removing its nuclear missiles from Cuba. Now the next thing we need to remember, we're coming on to the consequences of the Cuban Missile Crisis, is S, crisis, saved and sacked. Who is saved? Fidel Castro. The agreement is that uh, the Soviets will remove their missiles if America promises never to overthrow Castro, which to be fair they've stuck to and Castro was never overthrown by America, uh, although Cuba is still under an American economic blockade at the moment or sanctions. Now the sacked is Khrushchev. Khrushchev, according to some in the Soviet Union, has appeared weak for this compromise and eventually in 1964 he is removed as first secretary of the Soviet Communist Party, leader of Russia, and replaced by Brezhnev. If you really want to go deeper with this, um, Castro being saved has consequences. Castro remains a kind of thorn in America's side right next to them for the rest of the Cold War and the Cubans are slightly more aggressive than the Russians or the Soviets in spreading left-wing ideals. So they fund other left-wing groups in Bolivia and parts of Latin America and also in Africa. Um, che Guevara, Fidel Castro's right-hand man during the revolution, goes over there and helps fight uh, for the communists in Angola, which if you really want to take deeper, uh, when Nelson Mandela gets out of prison, um, Nelson Mandela actually embraces Fidel Castro and says, if Fidel, Fidel Castro and the Cubans hadn't helped us at the Battle of Quito, Cuano Valle, um, then we'd never actually have got here. So you could take that much deeper with your consequences if you're interested in African and black and anti-apartheid history. Okay, but the next letter we need to remember is I, image. We just talked about Khrushchev's image. He, according to some in the Soviet Union, was weak and he lost his job. Well, Kennedy, it boosts his image for many, many people because he appears to have saved, uh, stood the Soviets down from nuclear war and saved the world. The, biggest thing for Kennedy is that his deal to remove US missiles from Turkey is kept secret. So although everybody knows the Soviets have removed their missiles from Cuba, not everybody knows that America has removed its missiles uh, from Turkey. And so it makes JFK look fantastic, although some behind the scenes in the US do criticise him. And uh, the next year, JFK is assassinated, but that's a whole other story. So the final letter we need to remember is another S. And the last thing is, it is the start of détente. What does détente mean? It means a lessening of tensions. That's the next period of the Cold War that you'll be studying, if you do GCSE history in the UK at least. And the start of détente, because we got so close to nuclear war, both sides realised, hey, maybe this isn't the best idea. Brinkmanship, pushing each other right to the edge. Maybe this is dangerous. Maybe we should make some agreements. So you need some facts to prove that. So the start of détente, they create a hotline a phone between the President of America and the Secretary of the Soviet Union so the two leaders can actually negotiate directly and also we get the Test Ban Treaty in 1963 although these treaties don't have much effect. In 1968 there's the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty agreeing not to build more nuclear weapons although there's not much detail in that and eventually you could link it to 
SALT 1, the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty in 1972 between Nixon and Brezhnev. So there are some great consequences of the Cuban Missile Crisis. All you need to remember is C-U-B-A-N, Cuban, C-R-I-S-I-S, -I -I crisis, and you will remember Cuban Missile Crisis. How can this help you in your exams? Well, if you're doing GCC history in the UK, you'll probably have to write a narrative account of the Cuban Missile Crisis. So the great thing about this mnemonic, this word, Cuban Crisis, is the first four letters, C-U-B-A, Cuba, are causes. They're the causes of the Cuban Missile Crisis. The middle letters, N for Cuban, and then C-R-I for crisis, they're the events, they're the main things that happened during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And then the last part of the word crisis, S-I-S, are the consequences of the Cuban Missile Crisis. So that's nice and easy. You remember this word and you can write a great narrative in the correct chronological order. Also, if you're doing GCSE history in the UK, you might get a question like, describe two consequences of the Cuban Revolution. Now, that's a different question to the Cuban Missile Crisis, but this same word will help you. Okay, the first letter, C, that we learned, Castro's Revolution, well, that's not a consequence of the revolution, but the next letters, America's unhappy, that's a consequence. The Bay of Pigs failure, that's a consequence of um, the arms race, that's a consequence of the naval blockade, and so you can use it in that way. If you've got a question described to consequences of the Cuban Missile Crisis, then you can use the end of our word. You, again, you can use the I for idea to remove missiles from Turkey, the S saved and sacked, the I, Kennedy's image, and the S, start of detente as your consequences, so nice and easy. And the other question you might get are, explain the importance of the Cuban Missile Crisis for whatever. So if you've got that question, if it was explain the importance of the Cuban Missile Crisis for superpower relations, then you can use the I, the idea, to remove missiles from Turkey. You could use the saved and sacked, both of those. You could use the image, Kennedy's image being boosted by it, and you could use start of detente. If you've got a question that like explain the importance of the Cuban Missile Crisis for the arms race, then you've got to be specific that your consequences are linked to the arms race, but luckily, our mnemonic, our word, does link to that. We can use idea to remove missiles from Turkey. That's about weapons, it's about the arms race. And we can use the start of detente, because that's important, because they sign treaties to try and reduce or limit the amount of nuclear weapons. So, two words, Cuban crisis will help you remember everything you need to do to pass your GCSEs if this question came up. Thanks for listening. It's my first video. I'm going to aim to do more. And I hope that it's interesting. I hope it helps you learn. And I hope it helps you pass your exams, if that's your goal.